Hello Crafty Crandall fam! Today I thought it would be a fun idea to kind of combine video ideas into one video. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to cover my travel art supplies because I am going to be doing some traveling coming up and I have consolidated a very short list of my go-to travel art supplies and so I wanted to cover those and also do a sketchbook session with you using those supplies so that you can kind of see how they work. So if I go ahead and flip the camera around here, let's do this, you know, marginally uh, vlog, marginally vlog style here again. <laughs> um, this is the kind of the piece that I've already sketched out. I want to do, like I talked about in my last video, um, which if you haven't seen it, I'll link it above. It was just an, kind of an update video and also just like a real-time paint with me. But I talked about wanting to get back into doing more detailed pieces. And so this is a concept sketch for like a larger piece that I want to do. And I was just trying to figure out what composition I wanted. So this is one try. I'll probably do some thumbnail sketches with these items to try to figure out what works best, but this is the sketch that I'm going to kind of look at with my art supplies, which are right over here. So this is the bag that I use when traveling. It is kind of just a tiny, I think it's meant to be a makeup bag, but I don't use makeup, so I use it for art supplies. And this is by a really old American Eagle bag but obviously you can use any bag that'll fit your supplies and then here I have all of the supplies oh my watch thinks I'm working out haha <laughs> jokes on it <laughs> um but so I've got my Holbein well Holbein oh my goodness I can never pronounce this brand I am so sorry to anyone who like loves this brand but I am terrible at pronouncing it Holbein Holbein, please, please, please correct me in the comments. Um, but Holbein <laughs> watercolors. And then I've got, I think these two are um, uh, Core. And then these two are, well, this one's Windsor and Newton. And this one is M. Graham. So this is my go-to travel set of watercolors. So I'll be using this to paint this. I have a couple of different fine liners. I have my go-to Faber-Castell Pit Pens, which I've talked about in a million videos. You guys know I love them. I have my um, Sakura, uh, not Sakura, Tombow pen that came in the Jazza Arty Art Box. I love this thing. This is the most amazing fine liner, I think, ever. Uh, the nib here, I don't know if you can see that really well, but it's just like a plain felt nib, but for whatever reason, it works so well. Highly recommend if you're looking for like a good mid-size fine liner. This one is amazing. For drawing tools here, I have two ballpoint pens because I do tend to like to use ballpoint pen in addition to just a regular mechanical pencil. I am not a person who uses mechanical pencils very frequently. I do prefer to use like a regular graphite pencil uh, that, you know, you sharpen to a point. But for traveling, this is a must. A must. Two ballpoint pens. Again, usually I have one like in my purse for traveling and then one that I use just to do like random lines here. I've kind of accented some things already in ballpoint pen. Like this, you can see, is kind of accented. And then... Blending stump. Blending stump is useful if I'm trying to just do like quick graphite work and need to blend. Colored pencils. I love colored pencils for sketching. I use them a lot. Uh, I didn't use them in this piece because I do plan on using my watercolors, which are over there. <laughs> I do plan on using my watercolors for this, but I love usually sketching in colored pencils, which is why they're in my travel kit. I use them all the time. I just have a Obviously, you can see the colors, <laughs> red, blue, and green here, but honestly, any color of the Prismacolor Color Erase pencils, I use them for sketching in my sketchbook all the time. And then, last thing in the drawing implements is this Bosca pen. Um, this thing is amazing. It's white. It is perfect for adding accents to your paintings, for anything that you need to white out. You can kind of see here, I already used it here. I'm going to see how the watercolor reacts on top of it. If it does what I want it to, it'll be great. If it doesn't, it's okay because I can go back over it. 
And then I've got three paintbrushes here. So I picked these paintbrushes specifically because they are small enough to go in the bag and fit without ruining the bristles. I've got so many paintbrushes that don't fit in a bag and it drives me nuts. This one's a little bit bent, but it kind of always looks like this anyway, and it's super soft, so I feel like it'll be easily um, put back in shape. And I don't use this brush a ton anyway, it's kind of a mop brush, but I'm definitely going to use it on this piece because this piece is going to have a lot of color. The title of the song for the sketch is Colors Collide. This is a Blue October song. I love this, this song. I've actually done um, different pieces of my sketchbooks for this song before, but I listened to it recently and I really wanted to do another one. So the concept here, we're going to paint this in kind of like a collage of different colors colliding. I know, you're shocked. Um, and then just like the last thing here while I'm, <laughs> while I'm on my tangent, needed eraser. I love this thing. Um, normally, actually, I will also have, so I just keep my go-to erasers here. I've got a needed erasers, eraser here. Normally, I will also pack one of these, just like a regular old eraser. Um, I don't, I'm not sure why it wasn't already in there, but it's going in there now. So those are my travel supplies. My go-to's, I always bring some like variation of this. This palette travels with me everywhere. Um, and then 95 to 98% of these also travel with me pretty much everywhere. And then, you know, sometimes I like grab different sizes of like the fine aligners or something. But that, there you have it. There's my travel supplies. Now let's get into this painting because I am very excited to try to bring this concept to life. Um, this will not be a finished piece. I do want to do like a like a finished piece of this someday. <laughs> I just really want this concept in my brain to work. So we'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. <laughs> Can we all just take a minute to recognize how cute she is? Whenever I'm painting, she sits under there and it is adorable and I love her very much. The end. All right, so now commences the painting portion of the video, and truly the painting process for this video was the most fun. Uh, I really loved painting this piece. The song that it's based on is kind of like a really chaotic, interesting song, and so just being able to throw paint on paper and make it look as like chaotic and truly just collision based as the song would suggest was such a relaxing such an enjoyable process i would highly recommend to just color a page in your sketchbook like this like do any type of sketch do a flat wash of water over the top and then take all of the colors of the rainbow and just <laughs> fill the page because truly this was fantastic. Uh, you will see that the paper started buckling here after I had started on the left hand side. That was to be expected. I did not use a clip because I wanted to fill the entire page. I didn't want to have clip marks in it. I always end up with clip marks when I put a clip on and then I try to work around it and then I've got to go back and fix it. So I did not do this with this piece and I am very glad that I didn't because it came out kind of exactly how I wanted as far as like not having a clip in it. <laughs> and I would again like recommend trying that if you usually use clips like try to not use them once and see what happens. See how your paper reacts. See, you know, how the piece turns out. Maybe you don't have that problem. Let me know. Is it just a me thing? Are clips only annoying to me? <laughs> Having to like go around them or like pick them up and put them off the paper and then fill around them. Maybe it's just a me thing. But regardless, um, talking a little bit more about the painting process, I got to the point where I wanted to incorporate some green and normally this m gram green paint is my go to green i'm telling you i use it all the time but in this particular piece whether it was because i was putting it next to the red even though i had started purposely with a muddier color to try to bring out the green after the transition zone 
Um, it just, it was not working for me. And so finally I ended up having to get to a point once I added the blue and kind of then added it to the, um, core yellow. That's when I realized I can mix a better green than that M Graham was in this piece, like for this piece. Um, so that was really helpful to kind of realize that, you know, I can mix colors too. <laughs> it's not, I'm not limited to the colors that I have. They, they do mix. Uh, so once I made that realization, I kind of picked it up and kept moving with the piece. I went back, I fixed the greens again <laughs> and just kind of worked on that right hand side a little bit more. But overall, again, this process was so much fun. I highly recommend. And this travel palette had every color that I needed to adequately display all of the colors of the rainbow colliding together. So that was really what I wanted to depict here and kind of was the point, if you will, of the painting. And so let me know what you think about it. But honestly, it was so much fun. To top it all off, I tapped a bunch of water on it and made it bloom a ton. So that's just one tool in your watercolor toolbox that you can use to add tons of texture to a piece. If you are going for like chaos and just an explosion of both color and texture, I highly recommend this technique. It is so much fun just to like smash your brushes together and add some water to the piece. Um, as evidenced by my ugly water, it didn't even have to be clean. So <laughs> there's that. But yeah, I really loved it. All right. So I've let this dry and I was going to put another layer of watercolor over it because I thought it was going to need it. But to be honest, I'm kind of psyched with how this all dried and turned out. Like it didn't look when I put the colors down like it was going to turn out like this. Like I really love the blooming here. Um, I do think I used a bit too much yellow over here so it like kind of has an odd balance to it but that's something that I can kind of work out in like a color composition in a smaller little thumbnail reference but as like an overall composition I think that kind of looks awesome <laughs> so I'm really happy with how that turned out and so now I'm just going to go through and add some details and kind of like line some stuff I want to color some stuff in I want to kind of figure out how I'm going to emphasize the parts that I want to emphasize and go through like again one of the things that I want to work on is kind of like applying more detail and figuring out how to be better about that so that's really what I'm working on here and then I also haha <laughs> fun fact Posca pen does not do what I thought it was going to so I thought that the because this is a paint right like this is an acrylic paint marker I thought that the paint would um, kind of you work more like a wax, like if I had put a wax or a, um, like kind of like a masking fluid down, but I, I wanted it to retain more of the white here. It didn't. That's fine. Uh, I can go back over it again with the, the Posca marker, but I just wanted to point it out like what I was trying to do and what it did not do. So, um, with that, I'm going to kind of start to, to sketch here and I will try to, kind of explain some more of what I'm doing and just generally uh, the process here, but I don't want to, you know, have the voiceover while I'm drawing necessarily because I'm just not good at that. I will pause a lot and you will not enjoy it as much. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it back over to my other voiceover um, on my computer while I'm editing. But uh, yeah, I was just surprised that I liked how this all turned out. As, as much as I did. So let me know if you like it too. I'm kind of excited about this piece already and um, can't wait to continue using all of my like little travel supplies here to create something cool in my sketchbook. All right, and on to the detailing. So I sped all of this footage up because I personally don't love just watching someone go over like with a different medium, something that they've already sketched. Let me know in the future if you do prefer to watch that type of content and I can leave it in in the future. <laughs> but regardless, I'll just talk through kind of what I did for this process, how I think it turned out, where it could have been better, etc. I used the ballpoint pens, the Posca marker, the Tombow pen, and the Faber-Castell pit pens. And I went over everything that I had kind of sketched out 
and then tried to also add just like drop shadows pops of shadows so that i could have kind of more of a black and white contrast which is a very prominent feature in the song if you've listened to the song colors collide by blue october then you know that kind of the collision not only of the colors but of black and white and red are really prominent in the song so sorry that was me hitting my desk (laughs) Uh, i would recommend listening to it again it's a great song and that's kind of what i tried to incorporate in this piece things i think i could have done better (laughs) i think there is just a little bit more negative space in the right hand side of the piece than in the left hand side of the piece and so i think i could have filled that a little bit better with some more details there at the end you haven't seen it yet but at the very end the last thing that i go through is filling in the words on the right hand side Um, so we should be owning all of our own personal goals that's something that i just really take to heart and i think it adds a lot to the right hand side of the piece however i think that with the empty space there it could have been better the chains around the front i love the concept of having the chain be kind of like the overarching part of the piece that ties everything together while at the same time looking like a broken chain because it doesn't actually like extend throughout the entire piece so that was something that i really liked and i loved how the posca marker made it so much easier to color in the chain because let me tell you as someone who is trying to get better at detail but still doesn't really love it the chain was definitely the most arduous part of this piece (laughs) um and so if you've ever tried to draw a chain let me know if there was an easier way that i could have done it or if it's just always an arduous process because i love chain imagery i think that it's really cool and kind of adds a lot to a piece or like it can add a lot of symbolism or just meaning and so i really love it but at the same time it's a little bit of a pain to draw. That said, I think the methodology I approached here was great. Um, The Faber-Castell pit pen did a great job of filling in the fence in the background, which was super nice of it. Um, I started with the Tombow marker thinking that that would be the faster way to do it, but actually the pit pen was much better at kind of covering larger spaces at once even though it was the same like size nib the ink flowed a little bit faster and so it made the process more painless than it would have been i tried to add some speed lines to the car to make the car look like it was traveling very quickly and just tried to add some shading to the knife because it was a damascus blade that i had kind of looked up on google and tried to emulate in my sketch (laughs) but um really wanted to make that stand out uh, because it it is another like prominent piece of imagery from the song all the elements that you're seeing in the piece are really prominent like discussed images within the song so they do fit Uh, it might not look like they fit this piece might not look very coherent um, and you know that's fine that's all in your artistic interpretation (laughs) but that was how I wanted it to look. I wanted it to look super chaotic. I wanted it to look like everything was colliding and it was just an explosion of color and everything coming together and just making this really cool like depiction of all these objects that have a lot of meaning and a lot of just impact in the song. And so let me know how you think I did. I would love to hear your feedback on this piece and on this video. And I look very much forward to coming at you again with another one soon. (laughs) Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, So happy to have you here on the Crafty Crandall channel. Uh, I've got a lot of exciting videos planned. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did and wouldn't mind please giving me a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing to my channel as I post new art and book related content on Tuesdays and occasionally on Fridays. Thank you so much. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!